the Achav, maybe the men of Achav slaughtered. Achal Achav Gavri. They ate, and Achav ate and his men. And as they ate their own shechita. Zvoch Gavri the Yeshafet. Achal Yeshafet for Gavri. And Yeshafet's men slaughtered, and Yeshafet and his men ate. And right, there were two uh, two uh, grills over there. there Achav's men and uh, Yeshafet's men. So the Gemara says, Layavi Maflik He wouldn't have separated himself from Achav. Minalan. How do we know that? How do we know that the Yeshafet was going to eat from the same uh, platter as Achav? Because it says, like me is like you, like my nation is your nation. That's what Yeshafet tells him when he says to go to, bo- to war with him. He didn't finish the Pasuk. It says, my horse is like your horse. Is that, does that have anything to do with Halachas? That he's going to, it has nothing to do with it. It must mean, What he means to say is, whatever's going to happen to your horse will happen to my horse. Like a commitment that he's going to go to battle. It doesn't mean that I'm going to eat from your plate or your platter. It just means that I'm going to go to war with you, together with you, and whatever happens to you will happen to me. Whatever happens to your nation will happen to my nation. And the same with the horse. Whatever happens to your horse will happen to my horse. Of course, you can argue in time of war, you didn't keep kosher. Yes, they, didn't go, they didn't go yet. Hmm. They didn't go to war yet. They, well, at the end of this battle is, um, is uh, Achav ends up getting shot by a stray arrow because they thought that Yehoshaphat was the king because Yehoshaphat was there all dressed up. Yehoshaphat was the king of Yehuda. Aram wanted to capture the king of Israel, And so they ran after Yehoshaphat because he was in a character. It looked, he looked, they thought that he must be the king. And then they realized that it wasn't Achav. So they went back, but a stray arrow killed Achav. Achav ended up dying. This was the, um, the, uh, when all the prophets, Yehoshaphat said, we need a prophet to tell us to go. Mm. So the, all the prophets told Achav, you're going to win, you're going to win. And then Mechio said, uh, said uh, Mechio says, uh, you're going to lose. And uh, he says, see, I told you this guy doesn't like me. Achav tells you, shut up. I didn't want to ask him. Why didn't he just kill him? The, uh, Mechio? Oh, well, I think Mechio first tells him, yeah, you're going to win. He says, no, 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 tell me what you're really thinking. And then he says, well, you want to hear what I'm really thinking? <laughs> you're going you're gonna to die. All the people are going to be there without a king. And, and Okay. So we don't know where it says um, where it says that Yeshafat would not separate himself from Achav. Because we do have a solution. That Yeshafat's men slaughtered and Yeshafat ate. And Achav's men slaughtered and Achav ate. And his men. So it could be he never ate from them. Elamei Hacha, rather it's from here. That the king of Israel, which is Achav, and Yeshafat, the king of Yehuda, each one is sitting on his throne, and they're on his chair, and they're wearing um, their garments, and their the, garden means a granary, at the gates of, uh, entrance to the gate of Shimon. My garden, what does it mean at the, in the granary? Are they really in a granary? The gates of Sherman was a granary. Rather, they were sitting like a garden. The Tanan, it was like a granary. As it's taught in the Mishnah, Sanhedrin Haisa, Kechatsi Gairin Agula. The Sanhedrin sat in a semicircle. Kadeshi Urayan Zezeh, so that they should see each other. Which means that there was some sort of. Um, uh, feelings of closeness that they had with each other, that they made them sit in this, in this manner, that they were that would prove to us that it must be that Yeshua would be eating from the food of of Achav. Okay. Now we try uh, another proof. Lema Messiah. We'll bring another proof to Rav Anan that Rav Anan, the Rav Anan says that someone that's Eved Avod Zara, you can trust his shechita. It says, the orvim medium lay lechem ubasar, babiker, the lechem ubasar beerev. This is when Elio, um, Elio uh, was in trouble. Uh, he um, he uh, killed all the prophets. Zion, no, it's before. 
this is before this is before the the showdown. He um, uh, he he uh, he creates this famine. Um, he t- what happened at the at the funeral of Chia's uh, son, right? So Achav is there. Achav says that that um, God said and it says that if you're not gonna uh, if you're gonna worship idols, I'm not gonna give the rain. And look, it's raining. We have everything we need. So, um, but something Yeshua said about building Yericha, that uh, came into effect. But Moshe's things don't come into effect. So Elio tells him that no. Um, it's not going to rain from now on. So it stopped raining. There was a famine and for three years. And uh, Elio then is is on the run. So Hashem tells him, you go to this place and uh, the, the ravens will bring you food. Bring you uh, food. Okay? So he's bringing food. He's getting food by the by the ravens. They're carrying food and they're giving it to him. Why raven? From the, from the flood? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. <coughs> I don't know. Yeah, it must be. Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says the name of Rav in Beit Avchi Achav. Where are the ravens getting the food from? They're getting it from Achav's kitchen. How's Elio eating it? Must be that even though Achav worshipped idols, but his food is kosher. Wow. Gemara says Al Pia Diber shiny. It's Al Pia Diber. It was Hashem told him that I'm going to send ravens to bring it. So, interesting. Rashi says that it was temporarily permitted. That's what the Gemara means to say here. No, it's because Makkah has to eat. Uh, okay. Could have brought him bre- bread or something. So, the Masha asks, maybe it came from Avadya. How do you know? How do we know that that we're allowing this. We could have answered something like we answered before. It was coming, Avadi was slaughtering. Was, yeah, especially catered, which had Avadi seal on it. When it came, uh, mm-hmm. by the, it was a drone <laughs> that brought it in. So, uh, they quote, why do we, uh, the Ritz, how come, how come uh, Hashem had to do this miracle? And together with the miracle, he had to make a heter, a special heter for this. But the shot is, is that most people in Achav's house were Avdi Avdi Zara. What the Gemara means to say that Al Piyadi is that he was able to allow, he was, he was going to accept that it came from Avadia. Mm-hmm. You know, Avadia was the Miat. Mm-hmm. Avadia was only one individual there. Why was uh, uh, Elio allowed to eat this food? Al Piyadi Bashaini. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, based on this, uh, what Hashem told him that it was coming from Elio, that, that it was coming from Avadi and not coming from the rest of the men in Achav's house. Uh, <coughs> very interesting. Okay. Amar Avi, my Arvim. What is what are the Arvim? When we say that it's the ravens, Amar Avina. Ravina says Arvim Mamash. It's uh, it's ravens. Simple. What's the problem? Amalei Ravada Bar Minyumi, Ravada Bar Minyumi says Vidilma Trey Gavri Davi Shmayu Arvin. Maybe that's the name. The name was Arvin. That the food came from Arvin. Milak Ziv does not say in the pasuk Vayargu es Oyrev Bitzur Oyrev es Zev. Something it continues in something Zev. Uh, this is by um, by Gidon. Uh, Gidon had this um, uh, very interesting war tactic where he, instead of think, instead of um, instead of uh, having his, so, most of his men soldiers and some of the men trumpeteers <coughs> and uh, you know, blowing the the, uh, the shoifer and all of that because yeah, in the in the soldiers would make would make noises in the war they're shouting and to scare to intimidate the uh, the enemy Gidon did it just the opposite he had 300 men with shoifers and torches and he had like 100 men or something with swords or something so he he came onto this camp this was um, uh, this wasn't Aram this was uh, Midian I think came to Midian and they the, uh, they're all blowing uh, the shayfras. The whole army is blowing. They thought it must have been like hundreds of thousands. It was 300 men with shayfras. But that, 
the ratio to how many soldiers would be with such an amount of noise would have been that. And uh, everyone went running. And it says over there that he killed Oirev Bitsur Oirev, with these are princes of Midian, and Zev, one, another prince of Midian, and something Zev. In a, in a, this is he takes them back because what happened over there was they, the, some, he asked food from some people. He said, I'm fighting for you. They said, well, um, well, you, st- you didn't capture them yet, so we're not feeding you. So he says, I'm going to get them now. I'm going to bring them back. And... Okay, so, um, so we see that the name Oirev is, uh, we see that the word Oirev is a name. Amalei, it's Rami Milsa, the Tavayah HaVishmai Orvim. Is it probable that two people both have the name Oirev and you're calling them Orvim? <laughs> that you, like, pluralize... I don't know how you would learn in English. Smiths, two Seymours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two Seymours. <laughs> well, Smiths, yeah, in plural. So, yeah, that's how it would be. Uh, two Rennies. <laughs> so in Hebrew, it's interesting because you, it, it, plur, the plurals in English are always confusing. Uh, it, if there's an S, then fine, but other plurals, are, they mix you up. You mm-hmm. know, um, mice or something. So... Um, uh, Arvim is sort of like saying mice, you know. It, it's switching the the, the word. The, well, it's, it's a yud mem at the end. All right. The Dilma al shem Maybe it's because of their place, and their, it's not saying their name. It's saying where they're from. So that would be probable already. Yeah. That would me like Siv does not say Varam Yatsugududim. From Aram came out these uh, legions. Viyashru me Eretz Yisrael. The Yeshuvah Me'ar Tisrael, they came back, uh, they returned, or they captured. Uh, what's how, what's the, the vowels on the... By Yishbu, probably. Me'ar Tisrael, Nara Katana. A girl, a Katana, a, a young girl. Now, a Nara is a girl that's already reached maturity, and a Katana is a girl that's not mature. So, Vakashalan, Kari La Nara, Vakari La Katana. It's the, she's called a uh, Nara, which has reached maturity, and she's also called a, a child. So, what's going on? Amarav Pitas, Katana Demin Urin. When it says Nara, it doesn't mean that she's a mature a Nara. That's the Hebrew word for a mature girl. It's referring to a place. She's Nara. She's from the Urin. She was from the place. So, but this was the story with um, uh, Nama. Uh, with, with the Tsaras. With the Tsaras. That they, this girl, um, the, the, this general of Aram, has Tsaras. And one of his wives, this girl is given to one of his wives as a servant. And she says that I have a, uh, a prophet back where I come from, Elisha, that could help the master get rid of his taras. So they sent to Eli- Elisha, and he, uh, he um, tells him he should dip in the, in the, in the river uh, seven times. And Naaman thinks that it's, uh, that, uh, what, it's ridiculous or something. Just it's like from Iraq, right? It's like... Is it like Jordan River? Like, yeah. why should I deal it? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's Puny it's River. It's from Syria. Yeah. It's from Syria? He says in Damascus, I have a lot of... Uh-huh. Like a better river. Uh-huh. Better rivers. Uh-huh. So in the end, he ends up coming back and he gives... Uh, he, he wants to give a gift and uh, Alicia doesn't want it and then Gehazi runs after him and says, no, the master changed his mind, he wants it. And, and uh, that's when Gehazi gets the Tsaras. So we're talking now that maybe comes from... Uh, they come from... Uh, from a place called Oirev, both of them. So then, Imkain Arviyim Mibayile, it shouldn't say Arvim, which we, we wanted to translate as ravens, then we translate it, that maybe it's the people's names, and then we said that maybe they come from a place Oirev. It says, no, if they come from a place Oirev, then it should have been Arviyim. Okay, let's lay my Messiah in. Let's bring up another proof to Rav Anon. Now, this proof we actually brought to Rava, this Brisa that we brought. We said that this is a proof... <laughs> That Rava holds the, the, the proof that 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 to Rava's opinion that a mumar um, to eat non-kosher, you can still trust his his food if he has the ability to make it kosher. Mm-hmm. We said no. Maybe this price is referring to Ravanan. Now we actually take that up seriously and we say, okay, this is a proof to Ravanan, as we'll see. Hakol Shaykhtin, everyone can shaykh, da filu kuti va filu aro, va filu Yisrael mumar, even a kuti, even a aro, someone that didn't have a circumcision, va filu Yisrael mumar, even a Jew that ch- transgresses. Hai aro hechi dami. What's the case of the aro? I le meshamei suach v'mach masmilif, his brothers died, and so he had uh, an exemption from having a bris. 
Hayisro Malyu, then he's a real Jew. He's a good Jew. He wasn't supposed to. Elapshita must be Mumelarelus. It must be that he's a transgressor. Ema Seifa, let's look at the end of the Brice of Afil Yisrael Mumer, even Yisrael, that's a transgressor. Hechidami, what type of transgressor? Ema Muladavar Echad, if it's just a regular sin, but, you know, any random sin that he doesn't keep. Afil Mumelarelus, then we already said that case. Elalav, rather it must be. Mumer Lavay Deskechavim, that he's, he's transgressing Lavay Deskechavim. And nevertheless, we can allow to eat from his shechita. Look at the Ravanan. This is a good proof to Ravanan. The Gemara says, Loi. It's not a proof. Why? Really, if he worships idols, we can't trust him. The Amar Mar, because the Master said, Chamur Avedis Kechavim. Avedis Kechavim, idolatry is so strict. Shekalakaiferba, anyone that denies idolatry, Kamayda Bechalatar Kulet, as if he's accepting the whole Torah. So we don't, don't trust, and the opposite would be true, I think. Um, if someone that accepts idolatry would be that he doesn't accept the Torah, and therefore you can't trust the Shechita either. El mumar davar. It must mean that he's a mumar not for idolatry. He's not a mumar for one random mitzvah, or one r- random sin. Rather, he's a mumar exactly for this, for kashas. Uke de Rava, mm. and it's a, this would be, a, a, and it's going according to Rava. So we really don't have a proof which way this is going. If it's like Rava or Ravana, we try to either, you put, put it this way, we say, no, it's the other one. You put it that way, we say, no, it's the other one. So at least one of them is right. Uh, one of them is right. We <laughs> just don't have a proof. <laughs> okay. Um... Mesve. The Gemara has a question here. It says, Mikem. We're talking about Karbanas. It says, Adam Kiyakiv Mikem Karban. If a person from you will bring a sacrifice, it says, Mikem, from you, Vulay Kulchem, but not all of you, because someone can't take, bring a sacrifice. Lohaiti a Mummer. It's excluding a Mummer. Okay. Uh, what is this? Bochem No, it's because he was Right. Amongst you, I've divided. No, I'm sorry. Um, Bochem Amongst the Jewish people, there are divisions that some Jews can bring, some Jews but I don't make those divisions among the, the, the nation. That means, uh, like a non-religious uh, guy, that we don't say that there's a difference between if it's religious or not. Okay. So, mina behema, from animals, you have to bring. Lahavi b'nei adam It's coming to include people that are similar to animals. Mikan, this tells us. Mikan, Amr, from here they say, Mikabun karbanis mi poishi Yisrael. That sinners... Can, uh, we accept sacrifices from Jewish sinners. So that they should return and repent. Except for the mumar. And someone that um, pours wine to idolatry. And he also violates Shabbos in public. So we have three rules here. First one is that a mumar cannot bring a sacrifice. The second rule is sinners can bring a sacrifice. And the third rule is that a mummer cannot bring a sacrifice. Well, why can't Rav Anand say that that's a special Zerz HaKosur regarding sacrifice has nothing to do with the Shrit? Let's see. Let's see. To, okay. Is this a Korban Chatas? Or just it's a... Actually, it's referring to the Korban Eilaf, but it's... Uh, it's the introduction to all sacrifices, which uh, the first sacrifice was a carbon island. So Gemara says, Hagufa Kasha. It's self contradictory because Amrit mi Kambalai Kochem, Light Yasamumar. You started off saying that only some of you can bring a sacrifice, it's excluding a mummer. Vahadatani, and then it says, Makabun Karbanis mi Paishi Yisrael. It says you can bring a sacrifice from sinners. The Gemara says, Halay Kasha. That's not a contradiction. Reisha, the beginning, is Mumar l'chala Mumar is someone that denies the whole Torah. 
In Mitziyasa, the middle one is Mumar Ladavracha, is a Mumar for one thing. Okay. Now, Ema Seifa, let's see the end of the, of the Brysa. Chutzmin Amumar, a Menasi Chayayin, a Machal Shabbos Befarhesia. Okay, so we know so far that a mummer for one thing is allowed to, he transgresses one sin, he's allowed to uh, bring a sacrifice. But now when we look at the end of the, the b'risa, it says, Hai mummer hechidami. It says a mummer cannot bring a sacrifice. Who's, wh- wh- what type of mummer? Imamalachalotera kula. If it's a mummer for the whole Torah, hai nureisha. We already said that in the beginning of the b'risa. I can't repeat it again at the end. So, imamal ledavar echad. If it's a mummer ledavar echad, kasher mitziyosem. We said clearly in the middle that he's allowed to bring a sacrifice. Alalav hachikamar, rather, this is what it means. Chutz men amummer lenasach hasayayin. V'lechal shabbos beferhesia. It's talking about a mummer, not, it's not a, a third category here of mummer and the and the menasach hasayayin and the mechal shabbos. It's talking about that it's a mummer to pour wine and to be mechal shabbos. Mm. And that person, Alma, we see from here, mummer lavei diskav ma'avei mummer lechal atayra. The lechal atayra kula. That a mummer for menasach hasayayin and for be mechal shabbos is considered a mummer lechal atayra kula. means he doesn't keep anything. Tiyufta de Ravanan Tiyufta. Mm. This is a very strong question on Ravanan. It's a strong question. So if it explains the way. Um, the Seifa, the Reisha is talking about the the Seifa is talking about Mumar la Avedis Kechavim. The Reisha is talking about Mamash Mumar la Chalat You follow? Okay. So, so um, in the middle is mumala davrachet. So what we learn in the Reisha is that you can't, you it's can't. Possible as well, but the size is safer. Okay. That you can't. Um, the Reisha tells me that you can't trust a mumala chol The middle says that you can't, that, and not the so trust. trust. They can bring a sacrifice. Um, they, the uh, the middle one is that a. Mumala Davarechad can bring a sacrifice. And the Seifa says that a Mummar for Avedazara is like the Reisha, uh, is like a Mummal Chal Terakula. Does that help? Does that answer the problem? Not at all. Okay. There's a special pasuk that has to do only with Kabbalah. What does that have to do with food? Uh huh. Uh huh. It must be that we're, we're viewing this, that the person gets a status. And. Ravana could say. That was a special status, like that one. Because there's a special possible you know. okay, Keep on going, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Rashi over here says that a Mechal Shabbos, <coughs> the bottom line, and Rashi says that a Mechal Shabbos is, uh, why is he a Mumma Lechol Terakula? Because he denies Hashem. Because he's not, he's saying that Hashem didn't create the world. Does it add the word b'farhesia, or it doesn't have to be b'farhesia? We say that it's b'farhesia. We say it's b'farhesia. We you mentioned this. It's only someone that would do it b'farhesia without any shame, right? Mm-hmm. David told me a story <coughs> recently. Um, Aren't most of those people would consider Tina Shemishma? Yeah, today oh, it would be a, a different, different story, status. Yeah. Rabbi Kivega points out from Rashi. That um, that uh, so let's say someone doesn't keep him kipper, who that's the worst, right? But it comes out from Rashi that not necessarily, because when he doesn't keep Shabbos, that's that's telling me that he doesn't believe that Hashem created the world. So he's a mumalachal terukula. But if he doesn't keep him kipper, that doesn't tell me anything like that. So it could be that if he uh, doesn't keep him kipper, that the, he keeps Shabbos doesn't keep him kipper. So he would still be accepted. The only problem is that Shulchan Aruch doesn't say that. Shulchan Aruch discusses, let's say someone uh, writes a get on Shabbos or on, um, on Yom Kippur, we say the get's bus- bottle because the person that wrote it is invalid. Mm-hmm. So why is he invalid writing a get? Because he's a mummer l'chol atera. That means that um, Yom Kippur would have the same status as, as Shabbos. Okay. The Gemara now asks, this concept of not accepting sacrifices, 
from someone that's a mummer. Vahami hacha nafka. Do you learn it from here? Mihasim nafka. We have another source for this. We're getting distracted now. We're talking about sacrifices. Uh, and we're talking about the different source where you can, um, uh, where we know it from. Okay. The Pasuk says, Me'am Aretz. Referring to, pa- let me pass the tissues over. The, um, the, uh, the Pasuk says, Achatas. Do you have the full Pasuk written down? Anyone in the Gemara's? Do you have the full Pasuk? In Nefesh Amos, Tachel Bishkoga? Me'am Aretz. Yeah, if my soul will sin. It says, Hashem Ashwell, it's a sin of Ashram, Oye Halida, Elo Fatos, Ashwat, Behiri Shabbani. Ah, excellent. If someone will sin, and uh, unintentionally, from one of the people, from amongst the people of the land. So it says, from the people of the land, thank you. It says, Prat Lamumar. This is excluding someone that's a transgressor. Rab Shimon ben Yaisi, I mean, Rab Shimon ben Yaisi says, Mishum Rab Shimon, the name of Rab Shimon, Asher Leisa Yasena Bishkagava Ashim. Uh, something that should not be done. He does it unintentionally, and he's guilty. What does this mean? Hashav me the Yasei, someone that repents, because now he knows, so maybe carbon al He brings the sacrifice on what he did unintentionally. Eina shav me the Yasei, but if he's not in, uh, repenting, because now he knows what he did wrong, Eina maybe carbon al He can't bring a sacrifice for what he did unintentionally, because it wasn't, uh, uh, he would have done it anyway. We say, my binaya. what's the difference between the Tanakama and Rav Shem ben Rav Yossi? Both of them say that, you, that someone that transgresses, he cannot bring a sacrifice. What's the difference? Rav Hamluna, Rav Hamluna says, someone that transgresses routinely, he eats chelev, and he, now he ate blood. He says, oh yeah, I ate blood. So... Um, he wants to bring a sacrifice for the blood. He always eats chelev. That was never a problem. And it's the same pasuk, the chelev and dam. A, but he wants to bring uh, a sacrifice for the transgression of eating blood. It could be nayo. That's the difference between them. Now, what are we seeing here? That the Tanakama would say that he's considered a mummer, and you can't accept from him because he's a mummer. You can't accept the sacrifice. From him, um, the uh, Rab Shimon would say that no, he never would have eaten blood if he would have known that it was blood. Blood he never would have eaten. Okay, so what's our problem? Our problem is is that first the Brisa says that a mummer you can't accept the sacrifice from, and we know it from Mikam, etc. Now we say we know it from Meam Haaretz that you can't accept the sacrifice from a mummer. Why do you need two uh, exclusions? The Gemara explains, One is by a chatas and one is by an oila. Before we were talking about an oila, like you mentioned. This case is talking about a carbon chatas. This is talking about a carbon chatas. Now, I'm ignoring a certain question. A very obvious question, but I'll get to it in a minute. If necessary. If it would have told us a chatas, which means our sukkim right here, Hashav midiyasay, ameyam aretz basay, so all of these things with Rup Shimon, and uh, uh, that's mishum de la kaparu. That. Thank you. A is brought for an atonement, and this person transgresses willingly, so he shouldn't be allowed to bring a, a chatas. Aval oira de dairanhu, but back to the oila, where someone that transgresses, we would say, that look, a, a gift he could give. He's not looking for atonement. It's just an oila. Oila is just a donation. So we would say, We should accept an oila from someone that transgresses willingly uh, because it's just a gift. The chatas he's excluded from. And if it would only say the other way, if it would only tell me a gift, because that's not an obligation. That's an extra thing. Don't bring the oila. We don't want your... Uh, um, your gifts, your donations. Avalchatas techiyuvu, but the fact is, a sin. He did a sin. We can't say he don't bring it. He would have to bring it because he did a sin. He had transgression. He has to bring it. We should say that you should accept it from him. So Tricha needs to tell me both. 
Thesis points out that it's a funny, it's a strange Gemara. The Gemara started off saying that a mummer lechala a mummer, someone that transgresses the whole Torah is not allowed to bring a sacrifice. A mummer for one thing, he transgresses only one thing, he, he, he can bring a sacrifice. He said, we know this from, from here, we know it's from Baychatas. What does it say, Baychatas? A mummer for one thing, can't bring a sacrifice. It's exactly the opposite. It's not, the, the question is odd. Because the question was, why do you need two sources? It's not two sources, it's, it's a uh, contradiction, it's a, or it's a, it's a machlaikis. Because this one says that a mummer for chalev can't bring a mummer, can't bring a, a <coughs> chatas if he ate dam. He regularly eats forbidden fats. Mm-hmm. And now he ate by mistake blood, which is both of them are, 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 uh, are forbidden. And we're saying that he can't bring the sacrifice because he's a transgressor. We don't accept sacrifices from him. It doesn't fit with... So Tyson gives two answers. Um, his first answer is that when it says that he regularly eats chelev, it doesn't mean that he regularly eats chelev. It means that he regularly transgresses the whole Torah. Why does it say chelev? Because the chatas is a chatas chelev. It's called chatas chelev. That's like the example for this chatas. It really means that he transgresses the whole Torah. Um, the second answer is that Chelev and Dam are in the same Pasuk, and they both have Karis. So when it says Mummer for Chelev, it's really a Mummer for La Isi Dabar. We're not discussing a Mummer La Chalat We're ta- discussing a Mummer La Isi Dabar. And, and uh, over here we're seeing that a Mummer La Isi Dabar um, according to Reb Shimon, mummer for one thing, according to Reb Shimon, is allowed to eat, is allowed to bring a sacrifice, according to Reb Shimon. So it, it really comes out the opposite. Uh, it, we, fo- we thought we were bringing a, a proof, according to the first answer, we were bringing a proof from both opinions, that you can't, uh, a mummer for the whole Torah can't bring a sacrifice. According to the second answer of Paisvis, it's from Reb Shimon that says that a mummer for one thing is allowed to bring a sacrifice um, because this he never would have done he never would have done this sin he's allowed to bring a sacrifice that we know from before that a mummer for one thing is allowed to bring a sacrifice uh, right and now we're seeing it again here okay the Gemara asks um, we learned before in this price before that a behema an animal is coming to include, you have to bring a sacrifice from an animal, it's coming to include that people that are similar to animals can bring sacrifice. Even if they sin, you say similar to animals. The, the, the comparison here, people to animals, is that they, um, they act on their impulses. That's the comparison, not other uh, comparison.